Hey folks, it's Sony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Uh, we're going to do something different today along with that project I'm working on. We're starting to stage the equipment, testing it out here in the office before we actually deploy it. And guess what? Place isn't ready yet. There's no windows. Actually, the windows are going in. Very little power, blah, 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 blah. So we're setting it all up here with the proper configuration. So when we're ready, we just go bolt it in and one less thing to worry about. Um, so I'm going to walk through a few slides and it's not meant to be an exhaustive configuration review so please don't worry it's not a PowerPoint dance it's just going to be a bunch of notes I'll show you what I did why I did it and we're configuring this uh, ubiquity access point this little UFO here and the ubiquity router with uh, two Cisco uh, what are these guys 3650s so we have to make the Cisco's play nice with the uh, ubiquity access point slash router and I'll show you what I did not a big deal hope you enjoyed it and have a good day. Hey folks, it's Tony for the Tech Firm. So, a um, bunch of slides. Just like I said in the video, I'm going to just jump right to it. I don't want to bore you too much. So we've got some uh, router requirements. Uh, this is nice to note ahead of time. A little prep, 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 as I always say before you jump into it. Uh, what the router IP is going to be, if you're going to have any uh, exclusions. Uh, what the office subnet is going to be, guest subnets, IoT subnet, and the VLAN associated with each one. Have it all nicely spelled out so when you dig into it, uh, you won't be confused or forget. And a little network diagram. So there's two switches. That top one is just VLAN 1. The bottom one is going to be VLAN 1, 100, and 200. And we're going to have access points off every single one. Down here is our Ubiquity router. So Ubiquity router, Cisco switch, Cisco switch, and some Ubiquity access points. A little bit about the Ubiquity router. We're going to configure port 1 with VLAN 1 and obviously the subnet. Port 2 is going to be the guest network, VLAN 100. Port 3 is going to be the IoT or AV network. And that is going to be VLAN 200. So every port is going to be uh, its own network and the router is going to handle DHCP. You don't need to do it that way. It's just the way I'm doing it with this example. We're going to take the internet off the copper port. Uh, it's obviously if they want to use fiber later, it's not a big deal. We just change the config later. Down here we have Dream Machine configuration details. This is again the router. And what are we doing? Well, obviously the DHCP server is going to have an exclusion. We're going to have a range of addresses that we're going to use and a range of addresses that we do not want to be assigned via DHCP. So in this case, 2.100 through 2.250 is going to be available and assigned. Everything up to 100 is going to be reserved for things like printers, um, access points, whatever we want. Uh, and that way we'll have a nice chunk of addresses we can play with. There's a, a bunch of other options within Ubiquity, like many other products that you might want to dig into, like DHCP guarding to prevent rogue uh, DHCP servers, stuff like that. Dream Machine configuration details. So here is where we uh, start playing with more configuration options and where you can see what you've done. So this is a different subnet, 100. And it's funny because what Ubiquity does, is it says, okay, you want the full range, great. Uh, so 100.1 through 100.255 is technically the range, but I'm gonna give you 249 usable IPs and they're gonna start within this range. So by default, it blocks off one through five. So that's kind of nice, right? Just so you know what they do. Down here is where we associate that network and port with a VLAN ID. So this is VLAN 100. And then the next one would be VLAN 200. When you take a look at the configuration details when you're done on that router, this is the router, you can actually see that port 1 is the LAN, right? That's what I was connected to. VLAN 100 is that network that we just saw in the configuration. And VLAN 200 will have its own subnet as well. On the Cisco configuration side, uh, we ahead of time, I said, I'll give the switch two IPs. Again, these were within that reserved excluded range uh, in that DHCP scope. We have VLAN 1, which is the office, and it's going to be plugged into switch 6. And all the ports on um, this switch, a switch 7, will be 1 through 12, and all the ports on switch 6 are associated to VLAN 1. There you go, I got that out. VLAN 100 is going to be uh, switch 7, that's the next switch, ports 21 through 24, that's the guest network, and the AV network is VLAN 200, which is switch 7, ports 25 through 48. The ubiquity access points are going to be ports 13 through 20, is just something I threw in there right now. Sample Cisco configuration, this is what we did uh, for the trunk port, 
And that's what the ubiquity access point requires because it's going to be looking for three different VLANs. We got VLAN 1, 100, and 200. So the description, I just put ubiquity access point trunk port, switch port, trunk allowed, these three VLANs. And the mode's going to be a trunk. And then I threw in spanny tree port fast trunk. You don't need to do that bit. I just do it as just part of habit. And the Cisco trunk port, this is the connection between the two Cisco's. Uh, again, this could be copper, fiber, whatever you want. And we have switch port, trunk allowed, VLAN 1, 100, 200. The mode is trunk, and that's pretty well it. So now when we plug in our access point and we're actually logged into the router, the router has the software to, to handle the access point. So the controller software is built into, built into the router. It just pops up. And now the ubiquity terminology is adopt. So when you click adopt, it adds it to the actual controller. And then from there, you can go and assign uh, what networks you want it to advertise or support. So from this, you can see guest is VLAN 100, the AV IoT is 200, and there's a default VLAN as well. So it's actually pretty easy, right? Now I want all three, so I support all three of them. And then when you're all done, you can actually take a look um, at the access point configuration if you like. I always have a, a kind of a standard, so this network's gonna be called people require proper access with a descriptor and a number. So PRPA guest, PRPA office, PRPA AV IOT, and then whatever the password happens to be. So it's fairly straightforward within the ubiquity side of it. There's a nice little GUI. Of course, on the Cisco side, if you can use a CLI, well, then you just gotta learn what that it's all about. I'm sure you do. And then test, test, test. So on the Wi-Fi side of it, I connect to the office Wi-Fi network, and guess what? I got an IP for that subnet, too. And then I connected to the guest network, and then I got an IP on 100. And then, of course, I surf the net, I ping stuff, all that good stuff, and everything went just fine. So it's important to have your configuration laid out ahead of time, get your configuration done, and test, 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 test. That's it, folks. I kept it quick, short, and sweet. Have a good day. Bye for now.